So hello guys, and happy Tuesday. <sighs> I'm not gonna lie, it's been hard to find motivation recently. Not necessarily the weekends, but in the weeks, to train in the evening, it's just felt really, really challenging. I know it's the time of year. Maybe I'm just being lazy. Maybe I'm working a bit more. It has been hard. But as you can see, I finally dragged myself back onto the fifty nine. And we've got a lot to talk about. motivated now just an hour on the bike and yeah it's back up and uh, yeah decided because I didn't get the chance at the gym today I'm just gonna have a little bit of a chest workout I think I am actually waiting for like a proper Olympic bar turning up and I just checked the tracking I won't have a lie it's like an hour away and I was like I'm not sitting around for an hour waiting for this so kind of body weight and rings it's gonna be <laughs> Today, my workout's pretty basic, you know. I have access to the most amazing equipment on the market at the gym I work at, but I'm a believer in you should be able to do functional things at home to give the desired effect as well. With a couple of my online clients, I actually recommend if they don't join a gym, uh, they have families, they have a lot going on in their life, and they actually don't live that close to a gym, so they were finding it's a half an hour drive to the gym, an hour, in a non-busy time to get round all the machines and do their workout. Half an hour home. It's two hours gone that quickly. So what I actually recommended to a couple of people I train online is just to get some basic functional equipment, like what I use here, Olympic rings, some weights, maybe a barbell. And do you know what? That's enough to do a really decent workout. One thing that I've found with getting strong and getting good with cycling, with strength conditioning, it's not about big heavy weights. The majority of what I want to do with people is more functionality, balance, these things, mobility. You know, the strength comes, but it has to be brought together properly. It can't just be all be on a leg press. A lot of it has to be functional. to get asked a lot guys and it's something I probably hear once every couple of days people always seem to ask me Robbie don't you need to be light to be a good cyclist because I don't really look like your standard day-to-day -day cyclist let's be fair and it's a very interesting question and there's so many factors which are involved with this but I'm gonna keep it really simple so the way I see my cycling the way I see my power is how strong I am pound for pound, yeah? So let's think about how you test your power. Let's talk about FTP. So that's your test you do onto it, yeah? Your number could be 150 watts, could be 300 watts. So me personally, when I weighed my lightest, I was like 74 kilo, and I probably had an FTP of about 280, yeah? So when I weigh my heaviest, which is probably now about 82, 83 kilos, my FTP is much higher. It's like 320. So that difference in FTP doesn't mean that the heavier me is a stronger cyclist. It actually evens me out to the lighter cyclist. 
because it goes by pound for pound. And that's an odd thing to say, but understand this, yeah? I may have a, at 73 kilos weight, I may have a 280 FTP, yeah? So you put those two figures together and you get your watts per kilo. So my watts per kilo would roughly be at 73 kilos, about four watts per kilo. Put me at 83 kilos for a 320 FTP, it's about four watts per kilo. So do you have to be light to be a good cyclist? No, not necessarily. It helps, there's a lot of other factors. You know, if everyone could be heavy and just produce a lot of power, you'll probably see some bigger guys in the Tour de France. Being lighter does help to a certain extent, but in general stuff like ultra racing, pound for pound is probably where you want to be. You know, you can weigh more. If you've got the power to back it up, you've got nothing to worry about.